Hello and welcome. In today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to set up your very own public Rust dedicated server. So let's get into it. So before we can set up our server, there's a few things that we need to download. Uh, we're going to go ahead over to Steam CMD and you're going to scroll down to where it says downloading Steam CMD and you're going to go ahead and click on download Steam CMD for Windows. Okay, so after Steam CMD is downloaded, the next thing you want to do is head over to the description and you're going to find a link for our server files. So you're just going to go ahead and paste in this link or click on it and it should automatically download our Rust server setup. After we downloaded both of these files, we're just going to go ahead and click on Steam CMD and our Rust server setup. Now that I have both of these files open, I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder on my desktop called Steam CMD. Okay, so I've created the folder here. I'm going to go ahead and open this up and then I'm going to drag in the Steam CMD exe into this new folder that I've created. Then I'm going to go ahead and close this download for we no longer need it. Following that, we want to go ahead and open up Steam CMD and let it initialize uh, the process. Okay, so Steam CMD just finished setting up. We're good to close this now. And you'll notice that we have a bunch of new files here. So inside of here, you're going to want to go ahead and open up the Rust server setup that you downloaded earlier. So open this up, go into inside Steam CMD and you're going to drag in the batch file into the new Steam CMD folder that you've created. Okay, so now that the batch file is inside of Steam CMD, you can go ahead and take a look inside and see what is happening when we run this batch file. Okay, so now that we're in here, basically what we're doing is just force running uh, the Steam CMD steps for setting up our Rust server through this batch file. You'll notice that we have an install directory here. This is where you're going to want to um, type in the folder or the location of the folder where you'd like to install your server. So you have a YouTube Rust server here. So if I go ahead and open up a new file explorer by right clicking and just hitting file explorer and going to this PC and I go to my C drive, uh, you can see here, this is where I'm going to be installing my server. I don't have YouTube Rust server yet, but this will go ahead and automatically create that for me. So this is good, but go ahead, make sure that you type this in correctly um, and then close that. Then as soon as you're ready to install the server, go back into your Steam CMD and just go ahead and run this batch file. This is going to take a few moments and once it's done, we should have our new Rust server folder set up. Also, one thing worth mentioning, you'll notice that this says install or update. Whenever a Rust update comes out, just go ahead and run this batch file again and it'll update your server with the latest version of Rust. Our server has been successfully installed, so we can go ahead and close this window. Next, what we want to do is head over to the location of where we installed our server. As you saw earlier, I installed mine in the C drive, and we now have that new directory called YouTube Rust Server. I'm going to go ahead and open this up now, and then we're going to go back into our Rust Server setup uh, zip folder, and we're going to go into the inside server, and you'll notice we have one more batch file. So we're going to go ahead and drag this in. Okay, now that this is dragged in, I'm just going to go ahead and edit it. Okay, so here we have a batch file that's going to start our server. There's a few parameters here, uh, such as the port, the level, the seed, the world size, uh, the max players, and the host name. You can go ahead and fill in any appropriate information that you would like. Do note that there are limits for some of these parameters. So once you're satisfied with your parameters, you can go ahead and close this, and then we're just going to go ahead and start our server. Depending on whether or not you install the server on a hard drive or an SSD, that will determine how long it takes for this server to start up, but it usually does take a while, so please be patient while it does this. In the meantime, I'm going to start up Rust. Okay, so now that our Rust server has finished initializing, we can now join our server. So to join, you're going to press F1, and then you're going to type connect localhost, and then you're going to do colon, and followed by the colon, you're going to put the port that you specified earlier. We put 28015. Okay, and you can notice now we are now joining our server. And if we head into console and we type status, you can see that there is now one player joining. Do note, now that we have set up our server, our server will not be on the server list and no other players will be able to join. To get other players to join a server, we're going to need to port forward. We're going to have to open up CMD while we join our server. Okay, then following of opening CMD, we're going to type IP config. And what we're looking for is our default gateway. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this default gateway here and head into my internet browser. Okay, so I've typed my uh, default gateway into my internet browser and I ha now have access to my router. So what we're going to want to do is use the login information that's associated with your router to modify some settings. Usually the default login, if you have not changed this before, is admin for the user and password for the password. 
Okay, so I am now logged into my router's control panel. Uh, you may notice this does not look like yours. Um, however, usually the settings are pretty much the same no matter what router you're using. So we're gonna go ahead and locate the tab uh, that will allow us to port forward. For me, what I need to do is go over to security, go to apps and gaming, then go to single port forwarding. You'll notice that I already have Rust port forwarded here, but I'm just gonna go ahead and delete this and show you the process anyways. So the name, I'm gonna call it Rust. The port is going to match what we specified in the batch file. Um, same with the internal port and our protocol, we're gonna stick this to both and you'll notice that we need the device IP. So if we go back into our CMD here, you'll see that we have the IPv4 address. You'll see it has 192.168.1.125. So I'm gonna do .1.125 and then I'm going to hit save. And now we are now port forwarded. So whenever we go online with our server, other players will be able to join. So that will conclude this video. If you guys have any questions, feel free to comment them down below. And I hope you have a wonderful day or night. Take care.